Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness. And so we confess. We confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Friends, receive the good news. Receive the best news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, whether you're watching this live Sunday morning at 1030 or at any other time that better fits you and your schedule. Thank you so much for tuning in and worshiping with us, because that's what we are doing. Whenever you are watching this, you are worshiping together with everybody else who is watching this, with me and with all of our folks that have so graciously given of their time and their talents and their efforts and even a little bit of their own embarrassment and reluctance to be on camera and film parts of this service from their home or their place of business. I'm thankful for them because they're helping to show you, to teach you and teach me that God is with us wherever we are. We don't have to be in the pews to worship. We don't have to be in the pews to experience God's presence with us, to prayer or to praise, to sing, to hope, to feel God's presence. Because God is with you wherever you are. We're all kind of stuck at home right now or stuck at home and stuck at work, being encouraged not to travel because of COVID, I want you to know that no matter where you are, you are not alone, that you are loved, that God is with you, and that my prayers and the prayers of all of our worshipers here are with you. We are the Stalks. Devin. Heidi. Hi. Oh. And Micah. Micah. Good job. Okay, so we're going to read the prayer of the day. Almighty God, your son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your spirit that we may raise to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you, all the, excuse me, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Our Old Testament reading for today comes from Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Our reading comes from Romans in the New Testament. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature, you are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. And Christ lives within you. 
So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life, because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Here, is, here ends this reading. My name is Adwin Neal. I am seven years old and I am going to be reading the story of Lazarus from the Spike Story Bible. Three of Jesus' good friends included a man named Lazarus and his sisters, Mary and Martha. Jesus was on a long journey when he found out that his found out that Lazarus was dying. It took Jesus, a few days to travel to see his sick friend. When Jesus arrived, he saw Lazarus' sister, Martha. She had some sad news. Jesus, Lazarus is dead, cried Martha. I wish you could have arrived earlier. You might have been able to save him. Jesus tried to comfort her. Martha, don't be sad. Lazarus will live again. Martha believed what Jesus said. Then Lazarus' other sister, Mary, came to greet Jesus. She wished Jesus had came sooner too. Jesus, if you had been here, Lazarus might still be alive. She wept. She also believed that Jesus could have healed her brother. Jesus was sad, was sad because Lazarus died too. He cried and cried. Jesus, Martha, and Mary went to the tomb where Lazarus was buried. Jesus told some people standing there, take the stone away from the tomb. The people were surprised at what Jesus said. Martha reminded Jesus that Lazarus have, has, had been dead for four days. They had already made his body ready for burial by wrapping it in special clothes. But Jesus knew what he was doing. He insisted that they open the tomb. When the heavy stone was rolled away, Jesus said, Lazarus, come out. The people were frightened and amazed by Lazarus came out of the tomb. Hands in. Since his Hands and his feet were all wrapped up in the burial clothes. The people had to help Lazarus. When the people saw Lazarus alive again, they laughed and sang and danced. Many people that they believed Jesus would bring new life to all people. If you had been friends with Lazarus, how would you feel if how would you feel after he died? How would you feel after you saw him alive again? Addie, if you had been friends with Lazarus, how would you feel after he died? Sad. Why would you feel sad? Because he was my friend. Because he was close to you? What is something we can do when we feel sad? Go, um, say I feel sad. Mm -hmm. And we can say I feel sad in different ways, right? Mm -hmm. Like drawing a picture, mm -hmm. talking to our parents. Yeah. What else can we do to say I feel sad? Um, bring flowers to where he got buried. Yes. What's the second question? Um, how would you feel after you saw him alive again? Happy. Happy. Would you celebrate? And how would you celebrate? 
I would have a party, I would have cake, I would have a movie, and we would have pizza. <laughs> Addie, thank you for reading our gospel story for all of us today and for answering the questions for us. I feel sad. I would throw a party with a movie and pizza. Out of the mouths of children comes the simplest truths about the way we feel, the way we deal with death and our mourning and the celebration of new life or an unexpected return. What a poignant um, set of text that we have for this weekend. Ezekiel and the valley of the dry bones prophesy to these bones and I will give them life, says the Lord. Our gospel reading about Jesus and the resurrection of Lazarus. Which, by the way, Jesus actually, in that story, interacts with Lazarus. The resurrection act itself is just a couple verses. It's a very small part of that story. Yes, God is in control. God has the power of life over death. But in the 44 verses of that story, even the shorter version that my daughter read out of the children's Bible this morning, is just a small part. The rest of that story is about feelings. Jesus weeping. Lazarus being wept over by his community. Lord, if you were here, you could have saved him. But even now I know that you have power. The rest of the story is about how people felt in experiencing the death and grief, loss and mourning for their friend and their celebration at his new life. And how Jesus experiences those feelings among us, with us. So what are you feeling? I agree with my daughter. I feel sad. I feel sad when a friend dies. I feel sad when our community mourns the loss of anyone. Right now I feel sad because of all the people suffering around the world. As if there wasn't already enough tragedy in folks' daily lives and living conditions. Now we have COVID-19. I feel a deep gnawing ache in my gut. My heart is burdened with anxiety. I often don't know how to put it to words. So Addie, thank you. I feel sad. It's okay for you to feel sad too. I feel anxious. It's okay for you to feel anxious too. I feel scared. It's okay for you to feel scared too. Sometimes I feel hopeless. It's okay for you to feel hopeless too. This isn't from our text this weekend, but remember the story of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Even he wasn't quite sure that he wanted to go through with it all. Lord, let this cup pass from me. I don't want to suffer. Jesus feels with us, has felt whatever it is that we feel. And that's amazing. 
and that is good news. Whether you live by yourself or with your family or are going stir crazy being quarantined or stuck at home, which you should be doing, sticking to home and washing your hands, hashtag stay home together, God is with you. Always. Always. We know that God has empathy with us. We know that through Jesus Christ, God himself, herself, experiences death. Knows what it's like to grieve. Knows what it's like to suffer. Knows what it's like to mourn. Knows what it's like to weep. Knows what it's like to lose a child. Knows what it's like to lose a friend. God who knows all things knows our hearts. And God, who emptied himself and took on flesh, becoming a person, knows what it's like in God's heart to have it broken. But our scripture today and the message of the gospel is more than divine empathy. It's more than just knowing that we are not alone. It's knowing that God and God alone can bring new life. It's knowing that God can restore you. It's knowing that God can redeem you. Not only from death and sin. This story from Ezekiel about the Valley of Dry Bones. Ezekiel was a 6th century prophet. And he's writing when Israel is in exile. So he's writing to a people that have been spread around the region. They're no longer together in their communities, but they have been taken to a foreign place. They have been separated. They're wondering, when will we get our homeland back? When will things return to normal? Can we, will we ever be able to worship again in the temple? They're scared. Will we ever be able to go back to our pews, our spots in the church that basically have our own names on them. And Ezekiel says, God says to and through Ezekiel, to the people of Israel, I will restore you. I can restore you. I'm going to restore you. I'm going to resurrect, to raise up the whole host of Israel. I'm going to put flesh on their bones, wrap their skeletons in sinews, and give them the breath of life once more. Your separation, your anxiety, your diaspora, your isolation is not forever. But the day is coming when you will rise again as the people of God. You will be together. You will worship together. God alone does that. Our gospel story with the death and resurrection of Lazarus raises a lot of questions, right? Jesus, if you had been here, he wouldn't have died. What took Jesus so long? I don't know. For your sake and for my own, I wish that I knew. But I don't. We ask that same question sometimes in our own lives, don't we? God, you have the power of life over death? Why didn't you heal grandma or dad? You can do this. Why didn't you? I don't have an answer for you. Trust me. In all honesty, I wish I did. And I have no reasonable explanation. But what I do have 
and what you have in Scripture is that Jesus began to weep. The shortest verse in the Bible with perhaps the biggest explosion of meaning, Jesus wept. He wept for his friend. And he weeps for you. And he weeps with you. He weeps for those you have lost. He is with you always. I talk a lot with some of our parishioners here who are going through some terrible things about why bad things happen. Why did this car accident happen? Why does so-and-so have cancer? So many examples. I don't know an answer short of saying things happen. What I do know is that God doesn't cause those things. God did not afflict Lazarus. What Jesus did was raise him to new life. He wept, and Lazarus rose. And Jesus was with there, with his community, with them, in their suffering. While God doesn't cause these things that we suffer, God is with you in your suffering. The sure and certain hope of the cross and the empty tomb is the new life that you receive. The forgiveness of your sin, the knowledge that God knows what it's like to suffer and so you never suffer alone. God doesn't cause these terrible, tragic things, but God is there to hold you close, to love you, to give you peace, strength, and mercy. This, I believe, God's got this. God has empowered people in our communities. God has given us the gift of science, the gift of medicine, the gift of our leaders that are doing everything they can to give us good guidance, to stay home, to wash our hands, to be careful, to do everything we can to love one another and be safe. That is one way God is helping us address this suffering. These people are stewarding their education, their lives, their talents, everything that they have to save others. And that is a gift from God. That is one way God is alive and at work in this world. One way God can bring new life to others is through you, through your care, through your compassion, through your kindness, through your love, shared and shown to one another. Through a phone call, through a letter, through a grocery delivery, through Zoom or Facebook or an email or what have you. Parents, through you teaching your children. Teachers, through you providing those resources for parents to do so. Or like the live streams that you all have been doing. Addie loved the live stream of her art class from her second grade teacher, Mrs. Wilson. Thank you teachers for all you're doing. Thank you doctors and nurses for all you are doing. And thank you, each and every one of you, who are giving of yourselves, giving of your hearts to one another. God works in this world in many ways. God's got this in many ways, and one of those ways is through you. You can do God's work with your hands in encouraging one another loving 
and caring for one another. Just as God did restore Israel, brought them home, through a king, by the way, that was outside of their community, somebody who wasn't an Israelite. See, God works in so many ways that we don't understand. Just as God raised again all of Israel, so this whole world will one day see all this in the rearview mirror. And make no mistake, our world is forever being changed right now. But we will get through this. God will see us through this. Our doctors, our nurses, our health professionals will help to see us through all of this. I hope and I pray that I can help to see you through all of this. One day this world will rise again. In the meantime, as we weep, so Jesus weeps with you. Have faith. Have trust. Lord, if you had come, you would not have died, but nonetheless I trust in you. Because you alone have power. You've got it. Oh God, that is my prayer, that we trust in the Lord who lived, died, and rose again for you, for your sake, for the forgiveness of sins. The Lord who brings and gives you new life through the waters of baptism. Trust in the Lord. God's got this. Amen. Friends, our God is the God of life. Our God is the God of new life who breathes spirit and new life into our dry bones. 
Let us confess our faith together in the God of life and the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. I'll end each petition with the words, Hear us, O God, I invite you to respond. Your mercy is great. God of life, bind your faithful people into one body. Enliven the church with your spirit and bless the work of those who work for its renewal. Accomplish your work of salvation in us and through us for the sake of the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of life, you love the world you have made, and you grieve when creation suffers. Restore polluted lands and waterways. Heal areas of the world ravaged by storms, floods, wildfires, droughts, or other natural disasters. Bring all things to new life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of life. Show redemption to all who watch and wait with eager expectation. Those longing for wars to cease. Those waiting for immigration paperwork to finalize. Those seeking election. And those in dire need of humanitarian relief. Come quickly with your hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, you weep with those who grieve. Unbind all who are held captive by anxiety, despair, or pain. Especially we pray for all of those suffering from COVID-19. Fill us with compassion and empathy for those who struggle. And keep us faithful in prayer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life. We give thanks for opportunities for this congregation to collaborate with our community and caring for the needs of our neighbors. Strengthen our ties with other local congregations, agencies, and services. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. O oh God, we pray for those dealing with this global pandemic, for those who are sick and suffering, for those who have lost loved ones, for the frontline workers, the doctors, the nurses, the hospital staff, the caretakers, the first responders, EMTs, and other emergency folks. We pray for all of those who suffer and who put themselves on the line for the good of others. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of life, you are our resurrection. We remember all those who have died and trust that in you they will live again. Breathe new life into our dry bones that we too might live with you forever. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, this is the worship service for the fifth Sunday of the month. And at St. Mark's, every time we have a fifth Sunday, we collect a special offering to go towards a different community or global project. 
This month, our special offering for the fifth Sunday goes towards the St. Paul Public School Backpack Food Program. So during the school year, students that are food insecure at home have the opportunity to get a backpack full of food that they take home with them over the weekend to ensure that they have quality, nutritious meals at no extra expense to their family. That program needs money. So, if you have any money that you would like to give to that program, then you can do a couple of things. You can call the school, ask for somebody associated with the backpack food program and how you can donate. They would be more than happy to receive your donation. You can call or email me. Information is somewhere related to this video. It's also on our Facebook. You can mail a check to St. Mark's Lutheran Church. That's 1306 Howard Avenue, St. Paul, Nebraska, 68873. And just in the memo line, write Fifth Sunday Offering Backpack Food. We also, towards financial giving for the church, are exploring new ways to give online. So not only can you give your regular um, offerings or tithes to the church through the mail right now while we're closed, again at that 1306 Howard Avenue address, but we have an app that we're using now called Tithely. More information about that will follow, again, associated somewhere with this video, either in the comments or the description or check your email. If you want to give to the Fifth Sunday Special Offering through that app online, you can absolutely do that too. There will be an option to designate your gift to that. So we support the school's efforts to feed all the students in our community, and I know, and I pray, and I hope that you will too. This last Wednesday, I showed a short clip from the local food pantry, and they are always in need of certain donations, so I'm going to show that Again, please watch and enjoy and give as you feel led to do. Hello! Can I come in? Yes, you may. Thank you. Hello. Hello. It's good to see you, Pastor. It's good to see you, too. Barb and Barb, two of our food pantry volunteers for the uh, Howard Greeley County Food Pantry here in St. Paul. How many families would you say that you all serve here at the food pantry uh, monthly? 40 to 45. 40 to 45 families yeah. with anywhere from two to over five. Eight in a family. Up to eight in a family? Yeah. Wow. About how many different volunteers would you say there are? Do you have a way to estimate that? Uh, I would say, what, 15 maybe, average. Would yeah. you tell me a little bit about what kind of food people get when they come through? Providing we have it on hand, but we usually have uh, meats, uh, we have hamburger, usually some kind of chicken or some, once in a while we'll have turkey, sometimes we have ham, um, hot, dogs. hot dogs, we always have hot dogs, we have uh, fish sticks, right and now. right now we have fish sticks, uh, and then uh, most any kind of canned foods, um, pastas, uh, soups, lots of soups, um, fruits and vegetables, fruits. lots of fruits and lots of vegetables, peanut butter and jelly, yeah. Syrup oh. and pancake mix. Yeah. We have a lot of people uh, in the area that donate food. The different churches donate food. And then I order from the food bank in Omaha uh, off of the, and the truck brings it. What are you low on right now? And what can we do to help you out to serve our neighbors? Well, right now we need uh, pork and beans. We're we have one can. <laughs> uh, peanut butter. Um, what else did we say? Pancake mix and syrup. Yeah. Fruit. And, uh, right now we need peaches, but yeah, we need uh, 
Yeah, canned fruit uh, pasta sauce. Yeah. Okay. The we're macaroni really and cheese. Low on that, and macaroni and cheese were real low on that. Okay. And folks can purchase this from anywhere. Dollar General, oh, Hometown yes. Market, oh, Walmart, yeah. Sam's Club. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be name brand. It can be whatever. We don't care. And if folks do purchase an extra bag of groceries next time on their way to do their grocery shopping, how would they deliver it? Because this building isn't open unless you're open. So right. where would they deliver that? Uh, they can leave it at St. Mark's in the back of the church. It's a big red tub and you can fill it. And if it overflows, that's fine. That's a great problem to have. Yes. <laughs> so just bring them in to the south doors off of Howard. Right, right. inside the door is a big red tub. Right. Bring it in there anytime. Yeah. Okay. Why do you help the food pantry? There's a lot of people that need help and we're able to do it. Yeah. We have the time. We've done it a long time. Yeah, she's been at it forever. <laughs> My first... My first moment that I set foot in St. Paul, when Eric took me around to introduce me to people, mm -hmm. right? I think it was after my interview, actually. Oh, I think the it day was that after same day. Botman's? Yeah, the same day, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you were at the old pantry and you came in to see us. Yeah, and I came in and met you all there. At that, yeah. yeah, you were doing that work. That was the very first thing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, I, that I knew about this place. And from that moment, I knew that St. Mark's was a church full of people with open hearts and, uh, and strong backs. Yeah. Right? Farm strong. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for the work that you do. It is so important. And please let us know. And you at home. If you have things to donate, these gals would be more than happy to take those extra groceries off your hand and give them to, to folks that, um, that are in need. We have so many needs in our community, um, it's gonna get worse. more than we imagine, and it's going to get worse. Yeah. 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 Right. Well, thank you. The peace of Christ be with you always. Peace be with you. 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 Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen. I want to give you a brief update on the things that are going on. For one, there's a Facebook Live video I put out last Friday. Addie, you can take the computer off your head. Where do I put it? So there's this great website, teleprompt.me, that helps me do this. But I don't have anything to put the computer on, so my daughter puts the laptop on top of her head and holds it by the camera so I can sort of look at the camera and all that. You can just set it right down anywhere there, honey. Okay. All um, right, so there's a Facebook Live video from last Friday that gives a lot of updates about the things that we're thinking about here at St. Mark's, things I'm thinking about and the council's thinking about. But there's a problem. It's 27 minutes long. My bad. That happens. If you want to watch that video, skip ahead to about minute four because that's when it actually starts. Addie, you can just, just set it down on the table. It's fine. I don't want it to go on the court. It's fine. But to recap that, um, we are continuing to follow CDC and the governors. Uh, just a moment. Addie, <laughs> here, just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I don't want it to knock down this. And... The tripod? It's not going to. There. All right. 
We are continuing to follow the CDC's guidelines about gatherings less than 10 people. Um, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if they're going to restrict travel to just essential travel. So for the foreseeable future, we're not going to be gathering in person here in the pews for worship. We're going to keep this up. And we're going to keep trying to get creative and, uh, and change this up a bit and see what works, uh, see, what, see what doesn't work. I mean, if, if something doesn't work, let me know because I'm new to this whole thing too, right? Um, we will be putting out some videos, doing some live stuff for children so that we can continue our children's ministry, um, doing the same thing for confirmation students. You excited about that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. she is. Yeah. Also, parents, we're looking out uh, for ways that, that, that we can support you, that I can support you. We can have um, Zoom or Google Hangout or some sort of time to get together and talk. And we're thinking about online Bible studies. Uh, we're thinking about other online um, meetings. Uh, just look for more of that information, all that information in your email. By the way, if you would like to get our church's newsletter and my weekly emails that have things like links to these videos, um, then send me an email, stephen.neal at gmail.com, S-T-E-V-E-N dot Neal, N-E-A-L at gmail.com. And obviously then I'll have your email address and I'll put it on our list. So you'll get our newsletter and announcements. We continue to try to be engaged in the community uh, with appropriate social distancing and doing everything we can. If you have any needs, or if you know people in town or around that have needs, ways that I can help or ways that we can support you in any way, please reach out. Call the church, 308-750-1318. Uh, send me an email, send us a message on Facebook, leave a comment on this video, something, and I will be in touch because I want to help you out and support you. If you need to vent, if you need to pray, if you need just somebody to sit there and listen. Call me, Zoom me, Facebook me, something. I am here for you. Finally, remember the Fifth Sunday Offerings. Um, and we are looking at fun, creative ways to do Holy Week worship and Easter worship within relevant guidelines. We're not sure how we're going to do that yet, but I will be letting you know. All right, friends, go in peace, love and care for one another, knowing that our God loves and cares for you.